Today I'm going to show you how to uh, install Picos on a, uh, an open networking switch. In this case, I have a, uh, an Edgecore AS4610, but uh, the process is very similar on uh, the Dell platform or any other um, open networking switch that uses the ONI system. So the first thing you're going to do is you're going to come out to our support website and we're going to download the Pico releases. And you're going to log in with your uh, username and password. And in my case, I think this is mine. Copy. All right, and then we'll go and select, in this case, I'm choosing Edge Core, AS4610, and then we'll pick the version that we want. So 2.11, 22. We have two different versions here. We have the GoTo CLI and the standard. Standard puts you directly into the Linux. GoTo CLI, as the name implies, will put you directly into the Picos CLI. So we can look at this one. We have an ONI installer with uh, the name and, and particular number. We'll click on that and download it. Um, downloading the MD5 is actually not required for um, doing an ONI install. So this is an install directly on the system. So we'll download the ONI installer. All right, so I've already done that. And what I did is I went ahead and installed um, a Linux server. And when I install this Linux server, uh, it, uh, let's see here, uh, what I did was um, install the Linux server and I ran a couple of commands on it. Um, so after, and this is just Ubuntu um, 18.04, uh, as soon as I did that, I did an apt git uh, update ran that as uh, as sudo actually I have to do a sudo apt update what this does is it uh, basically gets an update of the uh, available package I can go ahead and run it again put in my password and it goes connects downloads the latest uh, um, information on on the applications that are available on Ubuntu updates the list there you go and then I did an apt and sudo apt git install apache 2 this gets me my web server now i've done this so i can do it again it's just gonna tell me it's already it's already installed and uh, once that's installed everything actually is running for the web server um, the directory where our web server is uh, is is um, is housed all the files for the web server is slash var uh, www.html and you can see here we have our index.html if I was to bring up a web server it would show what's in that index.html which basically says that uh, Apache is installed now you'll notice there's some other pieces here I have copied these over using SCP um, and I had to copy them to my home directory and then move them over to here uh, with the sudo command because this is a protected directory that only uh, um, um, root can write to so I have moved over my install images. Uh, Oni install. I have a few different versions here. This one is a, a, a beta version of the code. It's, it's our 6. We also have a, a 3.5. And then we have also a 2.11.25. So different versions. If you go from version 2 to 3, you can actually do an upgrade. Um, but if you try to go from 3 anything in the three release down to two, you're gonna to have to do an ONI install. But the purpose of this is to show you the ONI install. So let's go ahead and log in via console to one of our systems. 
So this is a switch that I have. Uh, let's do a show version. And I am running 2.1.1. I want to go ahead and upgrade to this version, 3.5. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to reboot the switch. Again, I'm this is a console session. So to reboot, I do a request system reboot. That's the standard way of doing a, a reboot of a windows uh, powered network op, uh, uh, network switch. All right, so it's going to go down for reboot. And I'm going to show you this process. So every system is different. Um, the one from the Edge Core, it has a little prompt that's going to come up here in a minute. It's going to say hit a key to break out of the normal boot sequence. In the Dell models, you'll actually get a menu. It'll say, do you want to boot regularly or do you want to go into Oni recovery mode? We want to go into Oni. And the recovery mode is just another way of saying I'm going into the Oni operating system so that I can then um, uh, execute some Oni commands to uh, contact my Oni server, to uh, load the operating system off of a, uh, um, a USB stick. In this case, I've set up this Oni server. There we go. Hit any key to stop the auto reboot. I am now in our, um, it's not, we're not in Oni yet. I'm gonna need to run Oni boot command. So I've gone into the Edge Core um, BIOS, and then I need to execute Oni. So now this is opening up the Oni network install environment. And we are then, we're gonna receive a DHCP address, an address from DHCP. You can see it happening right now. And then you might've missed this, but it says, please, press enter to activate this console. The ethernet link is up. I've got an IP address, uh, 10.120.154. It's trying to automatically find my server. Uh, I don't have that set up. I don't have a, a um, set up in my DNS server um, and, and my DH server for it to automatically find my Oni server. This is just my home lab. So I hit enter, I'm in here. I'm gonna go ahead and disable uh, auto discovery, right? Discovery stop. So only discovery stop installer mode is detected. And now I'm gonna go ahead without getting messages, trying to auto find it. I'm gonna only NOS install. And then I specify HTTP colon slash slash 10.120.30. This is the address of my uh, Linux server. Now I'm going to specify that I want to install this file. So because this is in the root directory of my web server, all I have to do is put that in there and hit enter. It's going out. You see it's uh, uh, do it's loading the file, 182 meg, and it's going to go about installing it. So it's verifying it. Me, it's going to give me one more option to to abort the install, and then it will go ahead and install the operating system. So by far the easiest way to install is using the network and setting up an Oni server in your environment. Uh, there are some people in lab environments or where the HCP is not working quite right. Um, there are ways to go ahead and. Uh, and manually set an IP address, but sometimes you just want to use a USB stick. So you would let the same install images on a, um, uh, a FAT32 formatted USB, plug it into your switch, and then you can mount that device um, using the mount command, and, uh, and then execute it in exactly the same way. And instead of using HTTP to grab the install, I'm just gonna do uh, Oni NOS install, and I'm going to specify the directory of uh, wh where where this image is kept on the USB. All right, so it's doing our install. It actually doesn't take too terribly long to install, so we'll just keep uh, watching this. Uh, so again, there are a few different ways. Uh, the main difference between version two and version three of the Picos NOS is that version two is on, I believe. Um, CentOS and CentOS 8 is what uh, um, Picos version 3 is built on.
I'm going to go ahead and pause and we'll resume here once the image uh, gets installed. All right, so there it goes. It's now doing the uh, install and it gives me another, uh, well, it's an opportunity to stop the auto boot. You remember that from the beginning where we broke out of that and went into the Oni environment. So this is doing a normal boot up. All right, so there we are at the login prompt to log into the device. Uh, the default username is admin, and the default password is pika8. And then it requires me to change it. Pika8.